survival. All right, welcome back. It's Kyle with All In Survival. Today we're going to be talking about fuel storage concepts. All right, fuel storage concepts. Now, let's start with why. Why do we want to have the potential to have extra fuel on hand? Well, I'm a diesel guy now, but I was always a fuel regular gasoline guy in the past. And I will tell you that having fuel for generators and if the markets go crazy and the gas prices go really high, you've got a few weeks worth of gas sitting there, it's a huge advantage. Now, I'll talk a little bit about bug outs and bugging in. Now, my particular concept is bugging out. So when thinking about bugging out, you're gonna want to think about your vehicle being your first storage container, all right? So uh, it's a little bit of a pain to, to have that topped off most days. But uh, if you can stop every two to three days and top off your tank, that will give you the best chances and the least amount of fuel storage that you'll have to have somewhere else in your preps. That being said, you're going to want to have a place in mind that you're going to want to go to, right? So family member living in another state, family member living on a farm, friends or family in other states or away from right your location something if it's a localized event somewhere you can go ride out the storm if it's not a localized event it's somewhere that you can have safety in numbers right those are reasons why people bug out now that distance is going to be different for everyone i suggest picking a location that's within one fuel tank of your vehicle but that's not always possible right so step one was keeping your vehicle full all the time if you do have a location that's close enough that you can get there in one tank then we're going to store that 10 or maybe 20 percent of your storage tank in your vehicle for that murphy's law right Murphy's Law says that when something goes wrong, it's going to be on that one day right before you go to fill up and you're a quarter tank down, right? For me, quarter tank down could mean 15 to 20 gallons, but for you, likely 5 to 10, right? We're going to want to have that sitting to the side. It can top your vehicle off before you take off for that location. Now, for those of you who have a location in mind that might be a little bit farther away, I suggest having that 20% off to the side to top you off, but then also have a plan to take one fuel tank's worth of fuel with you. If you have a truck, this is easier. If you have a car, it makes things a little bit more complicated, but think about the rack on top, potentially, and or if you have a hitch mount, some smaller cars, SUVs have that little hitch mount. You can get that little storage rack and put a few, uh, you know, jerry cans on that. I would not suggest putting fuel inside your vehicle. You might have a bad day with the, the fumes. But in an emergency, do what you got to do to get where you need to get. All right. So that's the how much. Now, how to get this done, right? You have options. You can go with something as easy as the cheap $20 fuel cans. Um, you can go with a larger, some, I've seen people who get 55 gallon storage drums and they slowly fill it up over time, put some stable in it. And then when something happens, they've got two or three fuel containers on hand, but they basically wind it into the smaller container and move that around. That's a lot better for somebody who's going to be bugging in, but for somebody who's bugging out, not necessarily the best advice. Now, why am I talking about fuel storage concepts today? 
I've already done a video on fuel storage. Well, in my daily activities when it comes to preparing, I go through each of my different setups once a year and I look for shortcomings. I look for those things that could be improved. And when I've decided that that's something that needs to be addressed, I start budgeting my, my monthly allotment towards that. It has been about two months since I've done any other prepping videos. And the reason why is updating my fuel storage situation here at my place has been quite expensive, but you get it done over time. So the first thing is, is I'm gonna go ahead and show a picture of what I had in the beginning. I had a little storage shed that was maybe about this tall. It was designed, I think, for garbage cans, to hide your garbage cans on the side of your house. Very flimsy made, relatively cheap, made of cheap wood. It wasn't airtight at all, but I went ahead and put a little solar panel uh, powered fan on top to keep the vapors. In those days, I was mostly storing regular gasoline, right? Uh, my truck and my Tundra was a regular fuel gasoline truck and it had a large fuel tank, uh, almost 48 gallons, I think, which is extended range, absolutely. Um, but I always kept between 50 and 75 gallons of fuel sitting here, just in case. All right, so you also wanna think about um, what you're gonna put it in and so for me, I went ahead and got rid of that, that larger one. It was falling apart. And I got, they make plastic, uh, basically benches that have storage room underneath them. And they're lockable. They're plastic. And uh, I got two. One's for my son's toys. And the other one is going to be for the fuel. And I've got five five-gallon um, military-grade Spectre cans. These are not cheap and they took me a while to get them. But then you've got 50 gallons sitting there. 50 gallons of fuel is also not cheap. And to top that off, I always keep a few extra things in there. My truck runs off of DEF fluid to keep the emissions low. It's a 2020 Dodge Ram. And go ahead and watch the video that talks about turning that into a thousand mile range vehicle. A long drawn out process but it was a good one the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have some fuel additives some stable some different additives I put Lucas in my truck because it in, it increases the fuel economy of my truck and it's I've been doing that for a long time and also I keep an extra wrench I got one in my truck and I keep one inside the bin some extra seals for the outside of the actual, um, when you lock down the lids, they're, they're plastic rubber seals. In fact, the last two uh, jerry cans that I bought, this the seal was gone. So I had to put those in there. It was great that I had them available. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to buy a couple more, but always good to have some of those on hand. Lastly, spouts. You want to have one in your vehicle at all times, one or two in reserve inside the box. All of these things together probably cost me in the neighborhood of $600. Uh, like I said, not cheap. Took some time and put that together. But what I have is I have an extra 50 gallons sitting there, an extra uh, 10 gallons of duff fluid, an extra four gallons of the Lucas additives, and this allows me to have some autonomy. I can do and go where I want to, even if there's fuel shortages, there's some issues, I have that ability. I'm not telling you what to do. Just put some time and effort into this. I like to say that I'm trying to be a good example of things that can get done. I'm not telling you how to do that you need to put some time and effort, some thought into your situation. All right, so a um, couple announcements. Uh, the next video that we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna do seeds. And uh, for a million different reasons, it's great to have seeds on hand. Even if you live in Las Vegas and growing a garden is 
not necessarily a wonderful and easy thing. Seeds, having seeds on hand for trading and for um, using in case you really need to put in a garden is a great idea. Lastly, um, I'm going to be doing a little, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call it, a documentary. Uh, you might see a pop up. I've spent the last six months re uh, building an old motorcycle. It's been kind of my passion, labor of love. I've put a lot of time and effort into that. So she's almost done. I'm going to go ahead and show you just a quick glimpse of her right here. You're going to see more of the monster. So, all right. As always, thanks. Be safe out there.